Hey guys, before we get started on today's Deeper Dive episode, we just finished recording and now we're backlogging. You need to know <laughs> that it went definitely a two-parter today. Yes, so yeah. look for part one and part two. Um, there's two themes, both both on fatherhood and how yeah. God is our father. It's so good. Uh, yeah. Anyway, anything you want to say? Yep. Love you guys. Make sure you guys share it and let it, let it, let this word get out. Yeah, yep. it's something for everybody. So Check it out, part one, part two. Here we go. Hey guys, Pastor Aaron here. This is Pastor Billy. Uh, we are excited to bring you another episode of The Deeper Dive. It's been a few weeks for me on The Deeper Dive. I'm excited. Um, just haven't been here. How many weeks? Two or uh, three? It's been, I think, two or three, yeah. Two or three I mean, weeks. So you've, been, you've been all over the place. So The nostalgia. <laughs> I'm back. Uh, I love, love The Deeper Dive. Listen, uh, if you don't know what this is, this is a place where we take a deeper look at application, revelation, and maybe you maybe you watch them every week. Maybe you watch them all the time. You ought to be sharing these things so new folks yes, can watch the Deeper Dive, the podcast that we're doing here. Again, what are we doing? We're looking at our Sunday sermons. What are we learning from our senior pastor in um, Sunday services? And then we go a little deeper. We talk a little bit, how does this apply to me specifically? What is the deeper applications? What is What are the deeper revelations uh-huh. like and perspectives that can come from the sermon? Sometimes, you know, you're watching and you get a, you get honed in on something that was said and right. it's just so awesome for your life, right? Do you realize that's happening for 500 other people in the room? Mm. That's, that's a lot. So, and, and the beautiful thing is you and I have found out repetitively now, the perspectives, they line up. Yep. But they're not the they're not the exact same. We'll come in with totally different opinions of where we're going to go. That's right. And then God just puts everything in line, and it all lines up in the end. But it's it's amazing. So all these yep. different people that are watching, they're all all getting different things mm-hmm. from each sermon. And yeah. this isn't just a perk of church. Hmm. This is the whole point, right? You know, to come together to strengthen one another. Iron sharpens iron, as Scripture says, and to grow, to grow, so we can therefore be better disciples and better. Kingdom warriors for Christ. That's the whole point. So, as a side note, I have to throw this plug in there, uh, plug in here into the Deeper Dive podcast. Everything you see us doing here in this podcast, where we're looking at deeper things and how to apply it to our lives, that's exactly what is supposed to be happening in life groups at our church. So, if you want to be a part of this live with a group of believers where they go through the sermon and they just look at depth, they get deeper. This is life groups. That's the mm-hmm. model. So um, join a life group, or at least get some information about life groups at the life group desk. But without further ado, let's pray. Let's get into it. God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you that you lead us and guide us in all that we do. I thank you for everyone that gets the opportunity opportunity to watch this podcast today and, and later on in uh, other days. I pray that you strengthen us, deepen us, so that we can be more for you. It's all about you. We give you all the glory. It's in your name. Amen. 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 Well, this week was Father's Day. Yes. Father's Day. Um, two dads here, so yep. we it means a lot to us. And we had some first-time dads. We did. Um, we had some long-term dads. I think Steve Smiley won the dad competition, right? Did he win that grill? He, he won the grill yeah, in he won the second service, yeah. yes. Um, Bruce in the first service? Yeah. Yep. A, lot of, a lot of people were in church Sunday. Uh, a lot of people were out of church on Sunday. But uh, let's just talk about... Let's talk about Father's Day in the spirit for a second. Spiritual, deeper application. What do you got? And when I was, I had uh, Danny on with me on pre-service Sunday. Yeah, and he went through, and I just, you know, he's a first-time dad this year, so I just went through, and oh, I asked saw. him, ever saw, ever saw, yes, Danny and I just asked him how, you know, in general, how life has changed for him, what has changed for him emotionally, spiritually, and he just went through some of the the basics that we would all mm-hmm. go through. You know how you know, he's looking out after a little Judah now. You know that's his responsibility. How this took place, that, and I right before he had to go. Uh, get down there for praise and worship, it just kind of hit me. And I was, I just told him, I said, you know, I just want to take a second. You know, what you just said, all the little things that we think about for just yeah. in the physical, you know, the happy moments, you know, the looking down at all the little things that, you know, our children do, you know, that has got to be, I mean, can you imagine the joy that the Heavenly Father feels every time that we right. do the same kind of thing, even, you know, as adults now, you know, as children? Because face it, once you're a father, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter if you're, 20 years old and a father or 100 years old and a father, you still have those same feelings yeah. of affection and joy and pride in your children. And just thinking about the things that we can do to make the Heavenly Father happy and proud and you know line up with what He has given us the yeah. example for. And, and that's hitting on something that even goes 
into an ocean of depth, how he sees us, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, reminding ourselves, we talked on Mother's Day a little bit, and we mentioned that when we did a deeper dive for Mother's Day, uh, I think you and I did that one, and we talked about the father aspect of who he is, right? Uh, But also, there's some motherly type of love. Mm-hmm. There's, there, there is a completeness. You know, God created man and yeah. woman in his image. So there is some components of God that are gentle, that are loving. Absolutely. And that's a part of who he is, and compassionate, and just there to embrace you. But then there, there is the more dominant part of his personality, of who God is, God the Father, and... That's how he refers to himself all right. the scriptures, how Jesus referred mm-hmm. to him as the Father in heaven. Um, so th- this is a big deal. How does a... Let me just back up a little bit. There's When you learn, take seminary school, and you're, you're in school to learn different theo- theology things, you come across some classes that focus on the character of God. Right. Now, there are some things that are communicable, and there are some that are non-communicable. What does that mean? There are some things about God that we get little pictures of in his creation. Right. And then there's some things that we don't get pictures of, right? God's omnipresent, meaning he's everywhere at once. There is not a thing in the world that can give us a picture of that. No. I mean, you can probably imagine it, how God's everywhere at once, but think about this. God is our Father. And I can understand that a little bit. It's a communicable trait of God because... I am a father, right. and I know how I feel about each of my sons and my little girl. Oh, that little girl. <laughs> um, I, I know how I feel about my kids, yeah. and likewise, after becoming a father, it deepened my perspective Absolutely. of how God must see me. This is a communicable trait of God. So um, let's talk about that. Um, how does God see us, and how does that compare to how we see us? Oh, that's a tough compare. I never thought about it that just, way. Just yeah, think just, of it like that, because we always think about we have our perspective, our yeah. lens, our glasses of how we we're looking at God, but you have to take off your glasses sometimes mm-hmm. and realize how He's looking at you. Yeah, and that's it's different. I'll take it on a level like, yeah, you know, I've we're on different different degrees as sure. far as our, our children. You know, my children are both grown now. Mine I've are got, babies. I've got one that's getting ready to get married and. Yeah, you know, love them both. You know, they're they're both great, godly people. I'm so proud of them. And as they've gotten older, there's times that I'll give advice. Doesn't necessarily get followed 100 percent of the time. Same thing that I do sometimes. But then I go back and I will watch them, and they'll they'll do what I ended up saying, or they'll see the difference. So as far as how we see ourselves, I think we still think that we know more than we know just like a child growing up and oh, as far as as far as with yeah. God we think that we're one place and then he corrects us or at times affirms with us that you know yes you maybe maybe you're farther yeah you know, that's something I think might be ex- ex- overlooked more often than not maybe and I probably do this myself you know you doubt your faith you mm-hmm. doubt what your purpose is but all the while, he's laid it out in front of you in black and white. So I think we need to look at things maybe a little, that. maybe not as eccentric as what we do. We just need to simplify. I think that would help a lot because whether you're ahead of where you think you are or you're behind, it's, it's, it's all in front of you. While, while God is complex and beyond our understanding, what he has allowed us to know about him shouldn't be overcomplicated. Right. What we have the capacity to understand at this point, until we're with him, we'll never be able to understand right. him, right? And then for eternity, we're just going to get to keep understanding mm-hmm. more and more. So we don't we don't fully understand the majesty and magnitude of our God. Right. We can't. We're finite beings, right? But what you're just saying, what you're saying there is what he's laid out in front of us is simple. And mm-hmm. I love you point out two different groups of people. There is the and you find these in kids. You find and I have one of each of these two <laughs> groups of people, I'll tell you. Um one group of people, they are, they think they have arrived. They think they have the mm-hmm. answers. They think they know what they're doing. Um, and God's trying to give us instruction. Man, I didn't bring my Bible in here. Some pastor, right? Um, I don't have my Bible, but he gave us the Bible, and he gives us the Holy Spirit so that we can be guided by him like a good father does. I'll give you an example of one of my kids. Um, one of my kids, Eli, my oldest, he was younger at the time, and he really trusts us now. 
because of some little things that we had to let happen. He was opening and closing this uh, drawer on one of our dressers. I mean, just slamming it over yeah. and over. And I noticed he kept putting his fingers in it, and he he went to slam it. And I caught the I caught it the first time, so he didn't slam his fingers. Right. Had his fingers through the dresser, and he's just trying to slam it, open it, slam it. I threw my hand in there, and I let it slam my hand, and that hurt oh. like nobody's business, right? I know he was two, but still, it hurt. And he keeps doing it. And I said, Eli, you need to stop. You're going to hurt yourself. And he wouldn't listen. He'd stop for a second. I take my hand out. He'd go do it again. I throw my hand in there. And how many times does God have to throw his hand in there? I was just thinking, how, how many, many times, times does God he... have to take, mm-hmm. the, take the hits, take the punishment, die for your sin over and over? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. how much does he have to cover before he has to let you learn? So he wouldn't listen. He would not listen at all, Eli, my son. And eventually, I had to take my hand out. And I begged him. I said, Eli, don't do this. You're going to hurt your fingers. And my wife, being the tough mom that she is, she's like, you're going to have to let him do it. <laughs> and I said, okay, uh, you're right. She's right. Yeah. And I had to let him, literally the next time, I didn't put my hand in there. And he didn't hurt himself too bad, but he slammed his little fingers in that, in that dresser. And he turns and he looks at me and he's screaming, like, how did this happen? I was like, yeah. I tried to tell you. Yep. And there's the people that think, so gr- group one, people that think that they they know more than God. I've lived long enough. I've I, I've studied more. I have more education. I, I know what I'm doing. I can, I've been around a minute. I can handle myself. There's that group of people yep. who are going to get knocked on their hind end um, by life. And then there's the other group of people who Eli has become now, and Jackson is in that stage of I know everything. But Eli's in this place now where... We went to the park, and there's this giant slide, like huge, taller than normal. And I said, you want to go down the slide? He said, I can't do it. I can't do it. Now, mm-hmm. last year, he couldn't. But this year, he's much bigger. Right. I've watched him grow. I know He's versatile now. He can climb. He's four. He knows what he's doing. And he does actually know. And as his father, I can see that and That's judge good. it yep. in truth at, better than he can with great precision of what he can and can't do. Parents, you know what I'm talking about. We know what our kids can and can't do. Yeah, they surprise us sometimes. But you can attest this to being a parent much longer. You know what they can and can't Mm -hmm. do. They can surprise you. But how often does that really happen? Usually you know. Yeah. You know what they can and can't do. So I'm like, you can do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Come on, just trust me. And then he steps out in faith. And Mm -hmm. now we get in trouble when we try to leave the park because he's still sliding. He loves that slide. Um, So... Two groups of people, the people who, that you just described, the people who want to run too far and God's trying to protect them, but he has to let life be their teacher because they won't listen. Then there's the people who constantly think they can't and God's saying, you can, you're ready, go. And he's, he's laid it out for us to where, just as anything else, both groups of people are covered. You know, he's, he's our protection. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we joke about it now, you know, the older group, you know, kid with a fork next to a life socket. Oh, he'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and you know, there are times where that's, that's the, where he gives us free will. We will make mistakes, and some of them will hurt a lot. Yeah. And, but, but they will also learn for, from them. And then going to the other group, you said something that you know, really kind of stuck with me. You was talking about you know, we know what's best. You know, in most cases, yes, there's surprises, um, not for him, but mm-hmm. we know kind of where things are going. And you said your son trusted you. Mm-hmm. I asked him to trust me, and he says, "Okay, okay." How and many times does, yeah. does God say that to us with the things that trust He's laid out in front of, us, front of us? Front of us. I mean, He will set things up. I mean, I'm, we talked about it on a uh, recent one with me. You know, my life story right mm-hmm. now, my my little testimony. If I hadn't trusted, I wouldn't. He He will not set you up for failure. No. Never. I you, love it. You will you will have trials, but he knows that you can rise up to those those occasions. Mm-hmm. Or even if you don't quite make it over the top, you're going to get to the top and you're going to learn what's going to take you yep. to that next level. It'll be a step. And this gives clarity to Proverbs three five and six. It says, uh, "Trust in the Lord with all in your heart. Trust yep. in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your, your own, own understanding." understanding. Yeah. And he will direct your steps. Mm-hmm. In all your ways, acknowledge him, it says. And yep. he will direct your paths, your steps in some translations. And that's that that just lets us know. And and I love how we pretend that we yeah. believe. You we let me say it again. We pretend that we believe God is in control. 
We say that. Mm -hmm. But when you really think about it, you really begin to understand this communicable trait that he is our father, mm -hmm. just like I'm the father of my kids. I really, I, I know I can't control everything like God can, right. but to a degree, and parents, you know about this, especially parents today finding new and clever ways to control <laughs> their kids. You know, we can control a yeah. lot. It's part we of, well, we can't control our kids. No, to a degree, we can. You know, like, well, yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? Kids will be kids. No, we're parents. We can control them yep. uh, to a degree, to a degree, right? Uh, we can help them, and we're not controlling. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to foster true growth in our kids, mm -hmm. right? We love them. Uh, in the same way, God, being God, no limitations like this father, you know, yeah. that father, the father, has all dominion and power in his hands. That Nothing stands between us and no. him except who? You. Yeah. Nothing stands between you and him but you. Nothing stands between me and him but me and my willingness yeah. to let him lead. That's so good. He, the, the writer, Solomon, Proverbs 3, Trust in the in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. That's for the people who want to run ahead of mm -hmm. God. And all your ways submit to Him, and He will yep. direct your path. That's for the second group of people. My son on top of the slide. He's like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Trust me, son. Mm -hmm. You can. And he just submitted to that, and he trusted in that, put his faith. That's, that's faith right there. He put his faith in me as his dad. He did it. And he found something. I know it's a, like a little example, but it speaks huge volumes. Absolutely. 